Okay, welcome to the next lecture of the Token Standard course. In this lecture, we will be showing you a little bit more in the site about how to create badges with different balance types and just walk you through the process. So if you go to the Create Badges tab, that is what we are currently on. And I'll skip through to the actual balance type. Um, so we'll do just have placeholder stuff for now. Um, and we'll have 10 badges in our collection. So let's start with on-chain balances. So if we go here, um, we can set the, as I mentioned, there's incoming and outgoing approvals. You can set defaults for it. Um, and then minting, we split it up by um, the mint approvals and then the non-mint approvals. So an example with this is that you can, um, you know, or for minting, you just get walked through this form. So, you know, maybe you approve yourself, you can use certain templates, you can set up a big badges claim. Um, so let's just like do a custom approval. We'll just set all this and just do simple like bit badges logo. You can customize who sends it. Well, in this case you can't because it's the mint address only, but um, customize who receives it. This will be on chain, so you can um, this will be checked on chain. You can override incoming approvals. You can ensure that the recipient is you know the initiator or not the initiator. Um, in this case, we selected the BitBadges claim um, template, so we, we can attach the uh, claim to the interface itself. So this gives us access to check all this criteria off-chain before actually, um, you know, approving the badge on-chain. So if you want to go through this, you can go through the, um, go to the claim section of the course. We explained it, I think, in the first course under the claims lecture. Um, but you can go ahead and customize this, customize rewards. One thing I will note with um, on-chain um, approvals with like the badges claims is that it's kind of a two-step process because you have to bridge that on-chain, off-chain gap. So we check the off-chain criteria first and kind of, you can think of it as kind of reserve the right to approve on-chain. But that reserve step, there is like a middle step that you actually, it's two separate steps. So you reserve the right off-chain and then you actually initiate the approval on chain um, and you do so by proving you have the secret claim code behind this is all done behind the scenes but it's a secret code that is given to you when you claim and um, on chain it checks that the code is valid from the claim so it's it's really a separated process there's two steps one first is to actually complete the claim and the second is to actually use it on chain so i just wanted to make that a little clear um, that it is a little different than um, off-chain claims and also like list claims or standalone claims. So you can also gate when the approval can be used and also check um, certain on-chain criteria. So as you see here, we can might be might add some credits to be sent to you upon every successful claim. So for example, we have each trans each use of this approval will transfer four badge credits to you. You can check certain ownership requirements on-chain. So maybe you can, this is only applicable to on-chain badges because that's what the blockchain has access to, but you can, you know, check stuff that's on-chain. Um, a lot of this stuff you can also do off-chain via the bit badges claim too. So it's all just a matter of if you want to check it on-chain or off-chain. Like as you see here, we can also check that certain badges here um, in the claim off-chain. So different trade-offs. And then an advanced topic that we'll get into, I think in the in a couple lectures from now, is you can also attach um, generic zero-knowledge proofs on-chain, which you can pretty much customize to do anything that you want. The last thing I also want to note for the criteria part is that you can use um, claim codes to just implement any functionality that you want. So we have 10 badges, so we can generate 10 claim codes, and then you know we can customize the, um, you know, you can implement your custom criteria checks, approval requirements, and so on on your end, and just use claim codes as kind of the interface to interact or bridge to the badges claims. So the last thing we also want to do is set the amounts. So you can set the amounts to be, you know, constant, or we can maybe do like increment by one each recipient and do like um, each badge will transfer um, 
like for example the first transfer will be for badge one the second transfer will be for badge two and so on um so this kind of customizes which ones which badges to transfer and also you can set like certain ownership times to transfer if you want to transfer you know the badge for a year a month a day you can also do so um So yeah, let's just leave it as this. And then we can see the, um, the example, and then we can add it, and then you can see it is now in the Mint approval section. So we can, users can now view this, and then they can, will be able to, there will be a claim button down here after, um, once they can actually, once it's actually created. And you can go through, and it'll walk you through all the criteria that is needed, um, whether it's on-chain, which is like above this line, as you see, or the off-chain stuff. Um, and in a similar manner, you can also do stuff for like post-mint. So um, typically this will just be non-transferable or transferable, but you can also add custom requirements however you want. So you can customize it. You can make certain badges frozen. You can just do whatever with um, just create custom transferability requirements, however you want, on any level, fine grains, um, certain times, whatever. And one thing I will add is that you can also, if, so we have the update collection transferability um, permission turned on, but you can also turn that off to like freeze the approval on chain so it can never be updated. You can also freeze, you know, post mint transferability, mint transferability, um, or you can even, you know, do custom requirements such as like all addresses, um, only, you know, certain badges or transfer times or ownership times and so on. So super customizable and the uh, updatability of it too. So, so yeah, and you just go through and create the badge and then from there users can claim from the mint address and then transfer as needed using the collection approvals. So I'm going to reset this and we'll move on to the indexed or um, off-chain index balances type. So let's do 10 badges again. And if we select the off-chain indexed, you can see here that there's two options. You can either hope have bit badges hosted and you can assign like certain balances based on certain claims. Oh, that's a little messed up. Um, so you can see um, that you, know, you can gate however you want, you can check certain requirements like Discord or anything you want, create custom claim flows, and then once they claim, they will be automatically assigned the badges that you approved off-chain. Um, so I'll delete that for now. You can also, you know, manually allocate stuff behind the scenes. So you can, you know, enter your own, the map that we were talking about before with like the Cosmos address to balance map. Um, you can do everything via a form. You know, you can just assign certain badges, to certain users, certain allocations and stuff, right? And you can see, and just super easy, super customizable, however, however you, however you want. Um, you can also self-host it. So this is kind of just managed for you in the sense that we maintain that map on our servers, but you can also, you know, store a map and host on your servers. So you would just provide the URL to where that map is hosted. Um, so again, let me just, as a refresher, let's just go back to the map example. Um, as you see, it would just look like this, where every key is, is a JSON map, with, where every key is the mapped Cosmos address, and then you just have a map of an array of the balances that each address owns, and um, the ownership times are Unix timestamps. If you want to do all times, use the go max Unit64, which is this. So you can also use the SDK to help you. Um, what you see here, oh, I guess it just refers you back, but yeah, now here it is. So you can use the SDK, specifically this function from the SDK, create balance map. Um, and yeah, it'll just help type check it and make sure everything's okay. So you host it, we'll index it with our refresh queue, and then you can update as needed and refresh as needed within the UI user interface.
So the last thing is on demand. Again, you can either outsource this or self-host it. Um, for self-hosting, again, you have to use the address as a placeholder. So like, for example, you just do something like this and then the address and we will um, call this endpoint with the address on demand replaced for this and um, just expect balances to be returned on demand. So one thing I want to note with this is that, again, you don't use a full balances map. You just return the balances such as this. Um, and it would be something like this. So you return the balances um, as this, and it's only for the passed in address. So one thing I want to note is that I would, for the time being at least, expect us to pass only Cosmos addresses. So make sure you can handle Cosmos addresses as you're checking you know, the requirements. So you might want to convert to your ETH address or whatever address format that you want to do. So just that's just one little note. And then for Bitbadges managed um, on demand, you can use certain plugins, not all, um, mainly ones that are addressed or crypto native or just kind of don't require um, can be can be checked on demand doesn't require state can be doesn't require you know success hooks or anything like that you can check whatever you want and we will auto assign based on that so currently we only do um, we like assign um, times one of all badges in the collection there's no like fine graining it so in the future we will support more fine grain but Pretty much, you set the criteria. If you meet, if the user meets the criteria, they will be assigned the badges if dynamically in the collection. And um, the last thing I want to note with off-chain and on-chain um, is, while it is the badges hosted, you cannot actually um, like kind of freeze the balances and make them permanent and immutable. But if you want to um, eventually freeze them, we can add them to IPFS and permanently freeze everything with the permissions on chain. So as you see, it'll freeze the balances forever if you do this. So this can be, this is more typically applied to indexed because um, it's just a single endpoint map that you have to freeze. So. so yeah, I think that's about it. I know, again, and I know it's a lot um, and a lot of design decisions, design um, like trade-offs and stuff that you have to consider, but we aim to be as flexible and as open as, and as supportive and feature-rich as possible with our token standards. So that includes where you host it, whether on-chain or off-chain, and how you host it with regards to you know the rules, criteria, and so on. So I hope this video provided a little more insight into how you actually create such badges, create such balances, and um, Kind of shown how easy it is once you actually make those decisions to create them on directly in the site and just allow you to focus um, on what's important rather than you know implementing complex smart contracts worrying about bugs it's all just super uh, super easy interface to implement so